Go. Go. Ready. Go. Go. So again, during the back swing, it's uh, quite slow. See? Mm -hmm. And then you're shifting this way uh, toward the target quite a bit, and then try to spin around. And in this, uh, uh, the lower body is not that active. So you have more lateral motion. And then it's fairly upper body driven. So you bring the, uh, the arms and club high up, and you are just uh, dropping it. And as we saw in the data, at impact, the club is pretty much right at the center of your body. Yeah, when you start, you will see that you are lifting the club head up. See? Go up, and then now the arm is going this way. So initially, you lifted the club up, and then at the end, your arm is also going up. With that, you have a crossover posture. From there, in order to try to hit the ball, then you have to turn around and bring it inward. So you have uh, two uh, ellipses. Uh, you know, overlapped like this, but not aligned together. Okay, so in your case, let's try to uh, increase the dynamics. So engage your lower body more. So let's uh, directly go to the step drills. Uh, the two step drills have three stages. Stage one, keep the feet together, throw the club toward the target, and then take a away step. And as you go through the back swing, and take the toward step, and then swing. So let's practice the, uh, the rhythm. Initially, you don't have to swing hard. Just uh, try to uh, ride the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Again. Ah, the right leg came in here. Is the left leg going oh. out? Oh. 
the timing of the second uh, step was late. So your goal is just to keep moving the clip head, okay? So uh, all the directions, uh, this is continuous motion. Go here and then bring it back and then swing. And then you are stepping this way too far. Too far. Yeah, the, the, the torso step is too far. So try to push the ground outward so they limit your lateral motion. Currently you are going too far here. Instead, push the ground and then turn. So lean this way, in the opposite direction. So in doing that, as you uh, uh, do the, the first motion, that's the trigger motion, and then the back swing and the down swing, try to initiate the turn with the shoulder turn, not the arms. Try to use the shoulder turn here and then let it go. Yeah, so the key is, in all directions, try to actively turn the shoulders instead of using the arms. You can add the arm motion later, but uh, so mainly it should be coming from the shoulder turn. Again, make it all continuous. No need to swing that hard, but uh, make a continuous motion. Am I stopping somewhere? You, because you try to put a lot of effort in the downswing, so back swing and down swing are kind of not uh, connected that well. Everything continuous. Again, the trigger motion is weak. No, the trigger motion is weak. You're only going about this much, but give it this much turn. The whole purpose of the trigger motion is to promote active back swing. So if you cannot really take advantage of the trigger in the back swing, that means that the trigger motion is too weak. Okay. Good trigger, and from here, turn your shoulders. Turn your shoulders and bring it back. And then try to increase the back swing speed. Uh, no. The, the tree. Oh, here. Your trigger motion is weak, it's a small. With this, you're already taking this step here, but let it go first to, to, to uh, this position point and then start oh, okay. the step. Up here. Mm. And then also when you do trigger motion, it's not this motion here, rather it's this motion here. You have to have the good turn of the shoulders. Mm. Mm -hmm. Turn this way more, the trigger motion, Bring the club more this way. Yeah. Now imagine, imagine a swing plane, which is uh, coming from the ball to your elbow here. Okay. And then the main purpose is to move the club along that plane. So even in the trigger motion, you'll have to move the club along the swing plane. And then also move the club along the swing plane and then let the club go all the way here. Do not alter here using your arms, but uh, respect, respect the inertia, respect the motion of the club, and then let it go to this position here. Okay? But if you try to dominate the club by using your arm, then what happens is it goes this way. But if you let the club go, let the club continue its motion, the club will go here instead of going this way. So, again, imagine the swing plane and then both ways when you move, you're bringing the club along the swing plane. Uh -huh. And then now, during the back swing, during the back swing, try to turn your shoulders more actively. It's not the arm driven backswing, but rather it's a shoulder driven backswing and then let the club go and then stop about here instead of lifting the arm up. So try to go to this position here. So if you continue this motion, let the club move, the club will rest about here, right? And then feel the 
posture, and then the, the direction of the club here. Mm -hmm. This is your target position during the backswing. Okay. Instead of going high up like this, go to this position here. So again, come down here. So from the trigger motion, from here, let the club move, continue, move that, uh, continue the motion, then it will go to this position. Remember this posture here. This is your target uh, backswing position here, okay? Okay. So a bit uh, behind here, and then also a bit lower here. You tend to bring the arm quite high, quite high and then go in this position, but instead go to this position here. And then this is, this is actually easy to achieve because from this position, if you just uh, turn your shoulders actively and bring the arms back and you will go to this position here. So instead of dominating the club with your arms, let the club go. Feel the motion of the club and the, uh, so let the club go and then to reach this position. So again, good trigger and the fast back swing and go to that target position. Yes. A lot better now. Again. So use the trigger motion more actively. Actively turn your shoulders in the back swing. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. Now, it looks like a PJ Tour player. <laughs> so here, keep the hands a bit closer, and then give more angle here. Start from here. And then make sure on the way down also, try to keep the hands a bit close to your body, instead of letting the hands going out this way. Yeah, that's really good. Yes. Again. Yes. Now I'll record this, and you will be impressed. Okay. Okay. Now, ready, ready, go. Ah, uh, uh, that trigger was a bit small. The trigger motion is a bit small, okay? But, look at now the way you are moving your club. Quite consistent here, right? And you're not turning this way. And then the back swing not going that way much. So it's fairly, the swing plane is well aligned both ways. Now, give me a large enough trigger so bring the club about here, about here. With that, during the back swing, use your shoulder turn actively and try to have a fast back swing, as fast as possible. To the level you feel a little bit uncomfortable, okay? So good trigger this way, and then with that, from that position, have an active back swing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now the timing of the second step is good, and then suddenly your, your swing is now very different from your initial swing. And it's a lot more dynamic. Okay, so let me watch from this direction. Oh, the steps are too wide. The steps are too wide. Assume your regular stance. Your regular stance. Oh. Then you are going to this position here. Again, so if the feet are here, your, the right foot goes from here to here, left foot goes from here to here. Okay. Only that much. So, Again, the, the step's too wide. 
ultimately, after taking the step, you are going to your regular stance. Yes. So in order to prevent excessive motion here, then you have to add the vertical rhythm here. So instead of going wide too much, if you have a more active vertical action here, then you don't need to uh, take a wide step here. Try to add a little bit of a vertical feel here. So try to push down mm. more than... Yeah. Mm. Mm. Instead of going wide. Particularly in your case, you are lacking the vertical rhythm, so you have to add the vertical rhythm quite a bit. Now, here's the, the thing. You are rushing down quite a bit. It's because you are rushing here. After the trigger motion, if you quickly bring it down and also try to bring it down quickly, mm, you give enough time, ooh, and then bring it back, Fast the motion, but give enough time here, and then let it go. So when you have transition both ways, you have to let the motion finish and then start moving. Then you will start moving this way instead of try to pull it intentionally with your arms. So let's wait until this motion is completed and then bring it back. The same thing here, wait until this motion is completed and then go down. So motion should be faster, but you have enough time in the transition, both ways. Still, the transition is uh, too, too quick. And you don't allow your body to turn enough. Turn the shoulder enough in the backswing. So with the, the trigger motion, the whole purpose of this trigger motion is to have a good wind up, turning the shoulder enough. You have to turn the shoulder more. Okay. Uh, still, uh, before you, this is completed, you're already taking, the, the, the step timing is okay, but you're shifting too much. You have to wait until this is done, and then you will go down. So what happens is, Instead of actively stepping this way, so what should happen is go here with this, shift slightly this way. With that, you have to take a step, right? As you turn, then you are recentering here. With that, you are taking a step here. And then let it go. So the stepping, the stepping is not coming from this reach out, rather, by leaning this way, you have to take this step here. When you walk, when you walk, you don't reach out like this, right? You just uh, trust and then let the body go and then take a step in time. So you will maintain this motion. Lateral step means the same thing. Instead of reaching out, let the body go this way. Drop the body this way and then take the step. So when you go uh, to this step, as you tri uh, in the trigger motion, at the end of the trigger motion, you are leaning backward. With that, drop the body this way, then you have to take the step. Go here and then take this step. Right? So during the trigger motion, throw and at the end, you will drop the body this way and then take step. Once you take step, then turn around as you turn, push the ground with the right leg, and then also drop the body left side, and then take the step. Instead of intentionally reaching out, okay? So you have to use the push in the opposite direction, and then drop the body the way you are going, and then turn. So again. Again, so the initial shift away was good, but the second step was again uh, reached out. So instead of uh, sh just a taking step here, turn your body and then pelvis will turn this way 
uh, taking the step backward. So here, let's, uh, let's first have the trigger motion. With the trigger motion, you have to turn the pelvis as well. From here, take a backward step slightly by dropping the body, okay? And then turn around. You have to go until all the way. Do not lift. Just the, turn the shoulders and then bring the club here using the shoulder turn. And then you are shifting backward as you on the way up. You are shifting backward. No, no, no. Do not open the pelvis. So again, easy, easy, easy. So uh, go from here. As you are going this way and then shift the body and then take the left step. And then from here, just a turn around. Okay, so the shifting should come from the push in the opposite side. So here, when you uh, go to the end of the trigger motion, by using the left leg, push the ground, push the ground and then let the body go this way. This will give you natural step here. Push and then this step. And also, as you turn this way, push the ground and then have this step. So these steps are coming from the push in the opposite side. Push and they take this step, and then push and they take this step as a result, instead of intentionally reaching out. So when you take this step particularly, your pelvis has to stay closed, and then by pushing the right side, you are taking left step, left step here, still keeping closed in the left step, and then finally turn around. So when you take a step, when you shift, keep the pelvis closed. So let's do this slowly. From the stage one, throw this way. Yeah, yes, again, so continue this. So the, the step is coming from dropping of the body instead of reaching out, okay? Yes. Again, turn the shoulder more actively. So particularly during the back swing, let the shoulder turn more. Good, wind up, and let it go. The downswing has to come from uh, that uh, good wind up in the back swing, not your intentional arm action. Again. Make it continuous, make it continuous. Now, good trigger, good trigger. Now, you don't really let the body first shift this way during the trigger motion, and just to try to go that way. So you are throwing this and then already try to step this way, but with this motion, first initially shift this way and then push and then come this way, okay? This motion should come from this push. Push and then take a step this way. And also using this push, push and take this step and then let it go. And then in each way, first you have to shift first and then start turning. So that shift and turn should be completely separated. Shift first and then turn. It's called a shun rhythm, shift the turn. So in the, in the shun rhythm, shift first and then turn. These should be separated. But this shun and then this shun will be overlapped. So this turn and this shift will be overlapped. So before this turn is completed, you're already shifting this way. So go here, turn and shift, and then turn. But in one direction, the shift and turn should be separated, but turn and the next shift is overlapped. So again. Yes, better, yes. So when you start the downswing, you are starting downswing with your back toward the target. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
now you're using bustles here. Okay, let me record this. So when I say go and then take uh, stage one, ready, go. Ready, go. <laughs> Still, you are moving, opening the chest early. Make sure you have a complete closed position and then when you take a step, still it should be closed and then take step and then turn around. So you have to have a good separation between the shift and the turn, okay? You see, but now the color motion is a lot simpler. It's a lot <laughs> better aligned here. Okay. No going up and coming back and there's a going in, inward, but rather the motion is fairly simple. It's because now your focus is uh, making fast factoring. So you don't have time to move the club this way much, okay? Okay, so this is stage one. Let's go to stage two. Stage two, eliminate the first step. So have a little bit wider stance here, but still narrower than your regular stance because you need to have this room here. So throw the club, trigger, as you bring this back in the back swing, no step. Without step, but take this step and then let it go. Only the third step, yeah. So you don't have to take a long step, okay? Just uh, keep good push and then take step, bring up and then down and then let it go. No need to uh, take a wider step. So feel the vertical uh, rhythm here. Yeah. Again. Go to uh, wind up the body more. Wind up your shoulders more in the back swing. Yeah, again. Uh, now the swing is really good. And then you have a lot more compact swing. However, However, use the trigger to promote the fast motion. If you, do, if you just cut it short here and then try to go here, you are using your muscles, try to start. But if you have good trigger and then using the body turn and then turn the body, then you will have a more body driven backswing, faster backswing. So the whole purpose of doing the trigger motion is using this promote Active vaccine. So how do you know how far to go with the, the trigger? Um, like, how do I know when to stop, I guess, or? So instead of uh, stopping, this is a continuous motion here. Go here and then bring it back and then let it go. Image the continuous motion of the clip head, first going this way, going this way, and the bigger, and then let it go. So the trigger motion is a lot smaller than the vaccine. But as you progress, you are making motion bigger. So with this, and then bring it big, and then let it go. So by using this big motion, wind up here, and then you will have active downstream. So build the motion from this bigger backswing, and then let it go. So use the wind up in the back swing well. Yeah, so really that active downswing is coming from good wind up in the back swing. Instead of trying to use your arms, have good wind up and let it go. Okay. So wind up is important. Very good. Now you are getting getting used to, to uh, this rhythm, so uh, you start showing confidence. 
still the trigger is weak. More active rhythmic trigger. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, still, still you try to swing hard in the downswing too much. You're putting too much effort in the downswing. But as I said, rather your effort should be in the wind up backswing. So, um, um, VJ sing. So that exaggerated VJ on the way back. That will control the timing. Okay. So is it more turn you're saying? Yeah. Faster turn? Faster and more turn in the backswing. Because the downswing is coming from this wind up here, let it go, instead of using your arms here. Okay, instead of snapping, you have good wind up using your body and then let it go. Then the downswing will be easier, but you have a really active downswing. So instead of trying to put a lot of effort in the downswing, put more effort in the wind up and have a good time up there. Good amount of time, wind up, and then let go. So imagine a spring, a clock spring. When you turn the spring, that it will build the tension, right? So with the, this motion, you are building the tension, and let it go. So this active downswing is not coming from your muscular effort here, but rather from that good wind up. The more wind up you have, good wind up, in a new shit. Let it go. So instead of trying to put a lot of effort in the downswing using your arms, try to put more effort in the wind up, in the backswing. Just to give large enough wind up during the backswing. Again. But make a trigger motion bigger. Bigger, active trigger. Yeah, the backswing is too slow. Make it faster. Make the backswing, backswing faster. So instead of uh, just to try to make a faster backswing, you have to use the trigger to do the faster backswing. So figure out how to use the trigger motion to speed up the backswing. Again, you try to just rely on your muscles. This is good. You, have, you are strong enough, so that's your asset, right? At the same time, add more range of motion. You are using both, increase the range of motion, and also muscular effort, not just the muscular effort. So make the, the trigger motion along this path here. Try to keep your hands uh, the, the more laterally instead of going about here, more forward. Bring this lateral here. With this, now your shoulders turned quite a bit, your pelvis turned quite a bit. Using this, turn your body actively, and then bring it this back, and then you will be in this position here. So use your body turn, okay? So starting from the trigger again. Keep the trigger a bit uh, flat here, yeah. From there, have active body turn. Yes, then automatically you will go to that position, right? So. Using the trigger, good, faster backswing. There you go, yeah, again, connect everything. No, 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 so make it continuous. Mm, mm. Yes, again, so speed up the trigger, speed up the backswing, but do not rush, okay, at the transition. Mm, mm. There you go. Make the motion fast, but have enough time uh, in the transition. No, 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 no. You try to take a, a wide step here because you did not use your, did not turn your shoulders enough, so you have to uh, take a long step. But go here with this, turn your shoulder enough, and then let it go. Okay? The shoulder turn is the key. The shoulder turn is the key, not the arms. Shoulder turn is the key. Turn enough, let it go. Okay, again. Now, 
Now the club is going more this way. So you have to control that. The, the club has to go more this way. So as you shoulder, turn your shoulder, bring the club. Yeah, that way, yeah. Still, you, in the downswing, you try to use your muscles to try to swing hard in downswing. The downswing action has to come from good wind-up. Just a good wind-up, and then simply let it go. In the downswing, use about 80% of your effort. Do not try to swing hard with the arms, but just a wind-up, and then just let it go. Let the hands and the club go instead of try to snap it hard in the downswing. Okay. Again, use the wind up and the also go a bit light in the downswing and then let the hands and the club go instead of try to snap it with your muscles in the downswing, okay? That's better, that's better. But the, the, stance is, the, the step is too wide. You have to control that. Control that by pushing the ground outward, outward here. When you push the ground outward, the ground direction force will be inward. Using that, you will be able to confine the motion. So imagine this cone-shaped space here, okay? Your pelvis can move more. However, your upper body is not moving that much. So go here, bring it back like this, swing and also keep the head more in the top of this cone-shaped space here. So the head is not moving that much. Actively move the pelvis. However, confine the upper body motion uh, here. So ima uh, imagine this cone-shaped space. So again, yeah, that, uh, that's good. And then, so, so engage, so in your image, you are turning the whole upper body, turning the whole upper body using the muscles in the core and the leg muscles. So your goal is turn the whole upper body using these muscles. Okay? Instead of using the arms and they try to swing the club, try to turn the whole upper body with the, these muscles. Okay. Ah, step was too wide. But that one should be okay because uh, in, when we go to stage three, then you will not have the steps. So in stage three, we'll be able to address that. But just uh, try to turn the whole upper body using the core muscles and the leg muscles. Mm -hmm. Now let me record this. So that flow is good. Ready, go. Okay. Ready, go. Yeah, so um, the flow is good, and then we'll address the, the, the whole thing in the stage three later. Yeah, you are stepping and then still you are using arms. You have to turn the shoulder and then using the body turn, try to uh, swing the down. So let's, uh, this is okay, let's go to stage three. Stage three, regular stance. So now we're not taking step, okay? So with the regular stance, the same thing, trigger motion, have, have active back swing, and then the downswing, yeah. So, so make a continuous motion of the club head. Make it faster. No, not that faster. You're still putting a lot of effort in the downswing, but make the trigger faster and then also backswing faster, not the downswing. Okay, do not put much effort in the downswing. The trigger was not that fast. Again, mm, put effort. Again. Again. 
<laughs> you are really muscular. <laughs> but this is good. You are, uh, when you use the muscles quite a bit here, then your swing actually becomes quite compact because you are not letting it go all the way here, not letting it go all the way here. So what happens is, here. So it's a muscle driven, but the swing becomes really compact now. Okay. So let me record this uh, from this direction and I will show you. Stage three. But try to make trigger motion fast, backswing fast. Don't worry about the downswing. Okay. Do not pay attention to downswing. Rather pay attention to your trigger and the backswing. Make those fast. Okay, so ready, go. Now see how clean your swing is in terms of swing play. Look at this. It's really consistent because of the speed. When you have fast motion, all you have to worry about is just to slow this down and then change the direction, right? So there's no room for motion in the perpendicular direction. So the motion becomes quite simple when you have fast motion. With the faster motion, if you go away from the swing plane, then you have disaster, right? It's hard to handle. So by, by instinct, what the body does is, as you, as you increase the speed, it will try to simplify the motion, moving fairly around the swing plane here. So you don't have any unnecessary movement. That's what the body does normally when you have faster motion, to try to cut off, cut down all the unnecessary things, maintain the main motion, and to make it as simple as possible along the swing plane. So by repeating this again and again, you will be able to you know, do this uh, without even thinking because it will become your dominant pattern, okay? So again, say three, trigger and then active back swing. Oh. <laughs> Yes, now you are increasing your magnitude, motion magnitude, because you are getting into this rhythm. This is good, this is good. Yeah, you're, you're really muscular, but uh, it's quite active. So again, let me watch you from this direction. Stay three, good trigger and continuous motion. Yes, now you are changing your swing quite a bit. I will record this. So stay three. Again, ready, go. Mm -hmm. Ready, go. So your club is going beyond the horizontal, right? But as you can see in the down the line view, it's not much away from the swing plane. So it's not just a crossover with the increased range of motion here, but it's fairly along the swing plane, which is good. So you can bring it down. Now let's take a look at how you move on the way down. So I will Okay, so go up here at the top, on the way down. Look at this position here. When your lead arm is parallel to the ground, the club is here. Remember your original swing, when the lead arm is parallel to the ground, the club was already vertical here. Mm -hmm. But now, with this action, when the arm is, left arm is parallel to the ground, the club is still here because you have less casting. Now you are more drawing the sword from the shit. So everything is flowing here. Yeah, so all your concern is just to bring it down and then let it go instead of cutting something. Just drawing a sword, okay? Now, 
So let's, so uh, when, after the trigger motion, you have to shift it this way, right? Try to shift a bit more. See what, what happens. So go here, and then shift first, and then turn around. Keep more shifted this way, and then turn around. So I'm shifting before I start turning? Yes, always a shift first and then turn. Again. Yeah, oh, good. So what happens is uh, when you shift this way more, then automatically you will have uh, more recentering, recentering during the backswing. So you start the uh, backswing with the shift first and then turn. During the turn, you will have a recentering, reasonable recentering, and from there, downswing. So by promoting, by actually having more, more shift away, you are actually promoting good recentering during the backswing. So again, try to uh, shift away more intentionally as you start the backswing. Yes. Uh huh. Woo. Yes. So let's use the orange whip instead of the club and do the stage three. Throw this way and then bring it back and then swing. Now, on the way down particularly, don't try to force the motion of the orange whip. Just to try to pull it down. Draw the sword from the sheet. Okay. Here, it will bend a little bit. At the end of the back, it will bend a little bit. Mm -hmm. But on the way down, do not try to intentionally cre create the, the bending. Just to try to pull it as if you are drawing a sword from the sheet. Okay. That way, this is uh, heavier than the, the club but you will be able to handle it well by uh, pulling it along the shaft. Again. Again. So it's a lot heavier, right? Yeah. On the way down, try to pull it along the shaft so that uh, you don't intentionally try to cut something or you know force the uh, the, the motion of the orange whip. Okay. Yes, that's good. So on the way down, although it's heavy, but uh, the motion is easy because you are pulling along the shaft. Again. Yeah. Now try this. The same thing. It's a, it's a lot easier, yeah. lighter, and <laughs> it's not as flexible as, as this. So. Yes, draw the, draw the sword from the sheet. Uh -huh. Yes, look at this. I think I can feel it now. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Now you have a good finish over the left foot, right? Good finish, but you have really active swing down. So let me record. Okay, ready, go. So yeah, your swing is a, a lot better organized now. You don't have any unnecessary movement. Good flow. So just uh, keep uh, working on this. Ready, go. Go. Hmm. Yeah, really, if you look at how your swing has evolved, no unnecessary movement, just following the flow. Okay. And then, particularly down the line view, you will see that how simple that motion is. Earlier, when we saw the data, <laughs> the clever motion was quite complex in the down the line view. 
Yeah. So your, your thing became a lot simpler, uh, better organized. All you need is repeat this again and again. So give me five of uh, uh, stage threes. Five stage threes. From now on, this stage three will be your pre-shot routine, okay? So always work on uh, stage three. And as you repeat stage three, try to feel the rhythm. Try to feel the rhythm. More than anything, you have to ride the rhythm. You have to enjoy the rhythm, okay? So uh, pay attention to the rhythm. Mm-hmm. Now the trigger is getting slower. So make a more active uh, trigger motion. Make the trigger motion a bit bigger, let's say. So one more. Yep. So your stage three will be the, uh, the pre-shot routine. And then do the stage three first and then do your regular swing. Uh, pretend that uh, here's the ball. Okay, so first do the stage three, and then aim the ball, and then do the, your regular swing. And then make sure, fill the stage three, and then in your regular swing, try to use the rhythm in your regular swing, okay? Mm -hmm. Now with that, and then approach it to the ball. Ah, <laughs> here you lifted your club up. It's because you started the back swing with the arm action here. Remember when we have a trigger motion here, that with this you will shift first and then turn around using the motion of the club here. The same thing from here, shift first, shift the body first and then turn around. And in your image, the end, end goal of, uh, end outcome of the back swing is Shift and then go to uh, this position here. Recenter the position. From here, with the shift, start the back swing and then recenter to uh, this position and then let it go. So with the shift, try to bring the, the, the club head just this way instead of lifting it up. Okay, just uh, let it go laterally. This way. Okay. You are lifting it up in the regular swing. Again, state three. In stage three, pay attention to the clip head motion, and then you will have to uh, use that in the regular swing. Yeah? That's better, yes. That's better. That's better. So, so are you pushing on the, on the regular swing, or am I pushing off the you are using, outward on this? You are using the left leg, to push and then start the this shift. Okay. Use a left leg actively and then push to the right. So then you will have a shift right and then now you're pushing the ground with the right leg. So uh, you have a stepping like action. But again, stage three. Mm -hmm. Uh, slightly lifted, but uh, it was better than uh, the first one. So uh, when you go back here, instead of lifting up here, try to bring below your shoulders. Just to, just to let it go this way so that it stays below the shoulder. Okay, shift and then shift and turn this below the shoulder and then bring it here. So do not lift the hand and the club. Should I do a stage three first? Or? Yes, always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now this is better, the way you start the, the, the back swing. And make sure you start uh, with the initial shift away. Shift first and then turn around. And as you turn, try to keep the, the club 
below your shoulder and then going to this position instead of lifting it up. Okay, so from this direction, again, stage three in the regular swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, and also what you did uh, in the regular swing, where you tried to lift the arm high up. No need to do that because when you let the club and arm move this way here, so it's below your shoulder right now, when you start here and then just bring it about this high here. Do not try to lift it high up here. Just to stop about here, you are already, the club is going this way, and a bit more, then it will drop, the club head will drop. So from here, shift and then go to this position here. This is all you need, because you are using your body. So again, state three, do not lift the arm higher at the end, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is good. Yes, that's good. That's a lot better. So you did not have this lift action. Now make it uh, really re uh, swing hard. So stay three and your regular swing. Try to put your, your you know, maximum effort. Uh -huh. Yes, that's all you need about here instead of lifting it up. When you try to lift your arm up, then you have to lift, the, from the beginning, you have to lift the, the club head and the arm up and go to this position. But if you just let it go more laterally, using the shift and then let it go, then it will go here. So you are not really introducing anything new along the way, right? Let me record this. So there's three and your regular string. Okay, ready, go. Mm -hmm. Now, regular swing. Mm -hmm. Now, regular swing. <laughs> ready, go. Okay, so now let's hit some balls and with that. So stage three and then hit the ball. Okay. So from now on, stage three will be your regular pre-shot routine. Stage three and then hit the ball. Again, make sure you uh, use the rhythm you developed in stage three in your regular swing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now approach to the ball. Yep. Uh, you lifted the, the club a little bit. And also, now, the ball goes really low. Why is it? Um, I can't tell fully, but it might, I might be hitting it low in the face. I don't know. You're shifting the body this way too much. Oh, okay. Mm. So, as you go here, and then instead of uh, going all the way here, Try to push the ground outward and then try to hit the ball like this. Lean backward. The downswing, while you let your arms and clubs swing fast that way, lean the upper body backward. Okay. The 
by pushing the ground with your left leg. So it went up, but this time it hit the, the body of the team. So now you are, there's a change here. Yeah. So uh, by leaning backward slightly, okay, you are more going upward. So, so go down and up. I, I tried on that one. So again, yeah, try it. Yeah, this is a once you are the once the rhythm is in place, then on the range you have to control this and then refine the rhythm. And then currently you have the tendency of uh, shifting that way quite a bit. So you have to limit it by pushing the ground outward, down and outward. Then the ground reaction force will be upward and inward, right? Using that, you have to create this uh, reverse pivot posture here. Reverse C posture here instead of going all the way. When you, when you go all the way here, then you have a down below, down below. But when you let it, let the arms in club go with a more stretched arm here, let it go, you will be able to hit up. When you say let it go, like what? I'm not sure, because I, I guess I've always been kind of active with my arms. <laughs> De develop the speed here by using the body and then continue that motion. Instead of try to influence the, the motion of the club using your body near the impact. Near the impact, let the club head go and then hit the ball. If you introduce something near the impact, then it changes the impact condition. So you can develop good speed before that, but once it is uh, approaching to the impact position, then you have to just use the momentum of the club head and then hit the ball. And so uh, at the top of my backswing, we're, we're centering, and then on the downswing, I'm going to Pushing down. Yeah, so using the you know sword sword drawing action from here, you start the, this turn here. All you need to do is, is let the arms and club go. Your body will slow down, and do not let your body go all the way here. That this will give you a down below here. You have to hit the ball uh, always uh, this way, no? but you have to now practice what this action. But the for when we recenter, the body isn't really going to go anywhere. Uh, so it's a it's basically recenter. Yeah. So uh, you shift away and then recenter. It's not a lot of shift this way. Yeah. So once we're here and we shift, we've shifted back to the yeah. center, there's really not and much then, motion. Yeah. And then from there, just uh, let it go like this. Okay. Yeah. Instead of yeah. keep shifting this way. Yeah. Again, stage three. So you have to practice that in stage three. Mm -hmm. Really let the arms and club go. Yes. Now, the launch angle is a lot better. <laughs> so once you are refined this one, then your swing becomes really good. Already the flow is really good, right? And then your, your tendency is uh, hitting down because you tend to uh, bring the club head more inward with the, you had the tendency of uh, down, downward hit. But now, if you lean slightly backward and then let the arms and club continue the motion. And then this will be also better in terms of uh, having stable finish because while the arms and the club are moving fast this way, you are leaning backward, then with that, you will have a better balance here. And then finish. So, again, state three. Hmm. Where did it? So somewhere up there. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm yeah, my eyes cannot, my eyes cannot follow that. Uh, I'm surprised it stayed down there. It hit the, the either the cable or something. <clears throat> this is too soft. Let's have a harder one. <clears throat> uh, 
I like uh, this phase more when you actually hit the ball and then see how it goes. No, oh, yeah, I mean, the, the feel of it is completely different for me just because, like you said, I had like a very passive uh, lower body. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Eh, launch angle here. Eh? Now I will record this. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the launch angle is really nice. So stage three and uh, the actual hit. Okay, ready, go. Yeah, the way the ball is bouncing. <laughs> yeah. And now you are getting used to uh, this pattern, which is good. Okay, ready, go. Mm hmm. Oh, you almost hit me. <laughs> Very good. Now, what is your highest clever speed or typical clever speed? Um, I was getting uh, like 108. 108? Let's try. Um, but my max, I think, is like 114. Okay. So, no need to impress me. <laughs> Let's begin stage three. Mm -hmm. Very good. One ten. Yeah, the impact was good. The launch launch angle was good. Yeah, now you are getting into uh, this rhythm here. So then, in the Stage three, try to have really fast backswing, and then prep your body, and then do the regular swing. See how it goes. So when you increase the, uh, the wind up, that, that gives you more speed, instead of putting a lot of effort in the downswing. Okay, so remembering that, One eleven <laughs> keeps increasing. Okay. <coughs> this impact was really good. One twelve. So every time is increasing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. This time, try to use your wrist more actively. So on the way down, add your wrist motion. So always, uh, you can add the wrist motion toward the end of the turn. And here. What's the motion that you do with the? So come down here and then try to uh, throw the club this way so use your wrist see how how it goes um, 
So just uh, try to use your wrist more actively on the way down. Stage three first. So practice that with the stage three. On the way down, add more wrist, active wrist motion. Mm -hmm. So instead of turning your body a lot, One twelve. <laughs> it keeps increasing, right? So, yeah. Um, instead of turning the body a lot, when you use it wrist actively at the end here, then you don't have to turn the body much, and then you will be able to add additional speed. So, go here and add the wrist motion at the top here. On the way down, keep it close to your body, and then add the wrist motion near the impact. So the wrist motion should be added at the end, not at the beginning. If you add it at the beginning, then it will become a casting. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything up here, more so down here. Hmm. So just to keep the club close to your body and then use the wrist. So this will be the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your impact, the launch angle becomes uh, better and better. Now this is really settling. The, the pattern is settling. 111, yeah, so you can have a 111, 112 easily. But if you practice this, you will have more gain. But you're, as you can see, your swing is now a lot more compact. You uh, removed all the unnecessary movements. Look at this. This is your initial swing. Oh, okay, yeah, that's gonna stay. Look at this. This should be, uh, the speed should be a lot lower than uh, 108, actually. Go. Now. It's very different. Yeah, you can see it. Hmm. And particularly when you start using the lower body more and more, then you will see uh, more gain. So the, the thing is, um, as you go back here, push the ground, and as you recenter, lower the left side. Recenter and then lower left side, and then downswing, kick the ground with the left leg, and then let it go. Let's try this one more time. So this lowering of uh, the left side has to be part of the back swing. At the end of the back swing, you will have a recenter and then lower this side. When you start the down swing, just to kick the ground hard and then let it go. So try to add the leg, leg action. Ah, it was still, it was not that, uh, you, you rather move the laterally. So this is, uh, this is the, yeah. So shift away, shift away, and then with the recentering, lower the left side, and then kick the ground and let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, you are, you, what you are lacking is the vertical rhythm, and then this leg action will uh, increase the vertical rhythm. We can have a faster trigger, faster backswing. With that, use the leg. Again, uh, hit the ball, hit the ball. One twelve. So that aspect that we need to work on next time. So practice this for a while, and then perhaps in the fall, come back, we'll specifically work on the vertical rhythm at the time. 
once you start using the legs more actively, then you will gain a lot of speed. Because, uh, like, I practice golf seven days a week, so um, um, do you think it needs to be till the fall, or can it be sooner? Or um, Then let's shoot for something in June. Yeah. yeah, I'll be gone most part of uh, July and August, so uh, that's why. Uh, um, but uh, we can do something toward the end of June or early July. Okay. okay. Uh, before I, uh, you know, leave. But yeah, uh, practice this, this rhythm. And then as you build more confidence, you will be able to uh, actually add more effort. That effort, more effort is coming from good active wind up not your intentional effort uh, in the downstream. So, you, but the, once, once you uh, start uh, feeling the rhythm and riding the rhythm, then you will be able to build uh, confidence. And without even me, you will be able to increase the speed quite a bit as you keep doing it. And so uh, report me as you progress, and then see uh, end of June or early July. We can, since you are close, we can just uh, set up a night uh, evening uh, session okay yeah. a quick evening session and then look at that okay yeah that was awesome like have you ever used a profiler mm -hmm. in software oh okay because i'm a software engineer so i know like and that's what it felt like i kind of figured when you initially asked me <laughs> questions i figured that uh, you were because that's what it felt like it makes it so easy to pinpoint things mm -hmm. and it was like you caught everything in like what was it 10 minutes 15 minutes uh, it's like I feel like all the golf teaching should be doing that. Why? <laughs> it's like everyone's doing stuff by sight. I'm not sure, but yeah. So, in your case, you uh, changed your swing completely. It's a day and night difference now. Okay. Yeah, I'm so glad that uh, we really made this this change here. Look at the down the line view here. This is initial. Look at this. You have lifting your arm. This is initial one. So you are lifting the club from the beginning and also you are lifting your arm up here. It's just one continuous motion. Yeah. Look at this. So the swing. <laughs> and then you just uh, work on this. And then, so initially, uh, maybe use a three to one ratio. Uh, stays three, three times and then one hit initially, and then reduce the, the ratio. And then eventually you just one to one ratio and use stays three as your pre-shot routine. Okay. And then hit the ball, hit the stage three and hit the ball. And always, always practice this continuous rhythm. It doesn't have to be a big, fast motion. Just to try to uh, practice the flow. Okay. Eh? Yeah, you, uh, this is your second birthday. You are reborn today. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the speed keeps increasing. And your initial speed, I don't think it was uh, close to a 108. If you look at the initial swing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been a while since I've measured. Yeah. But yeah, I was hitting like 106 to 108. But that's me, you know, going at it pretty good. You are quite muscular, so uh, take advantage of that. But to have a good flow, then uh, you'll be able to maintain really clean swing without any unnecessary movement. So do you have like any, because um, I do personal training. Is there any exercises that you know of or recommend that reinforce what so you uh, play with a different weight okay like uh, you just uh, used the uh, orange whip today and uh, you can also use the uh, rope do you have a rope no i don't have a rope just to uh, take one red one or this uh, white and blue oh it doesn't matter if you are the hot guy then uh, this is the red one <laughs> and they use the rope swing uh, try the rope swing with uh, your current uh, swing pattern <clears throat> Swing back and forth continuously. And try to have a consistent motion plane back and forth. Just to keep one, one quick stroke and all the way and then start swinging. So just a normal swing? Hmm. Swing back and forth, swing back and forth now. 
uh, instead of instead of forcing the mo motion, you have to pay attention to the motion of the rope. You have to pay attention to. You have to work with the rope. Rope has very different uh, characteristics, so you have to uh, work with the rope. Produce the the rope motion you want. Consistent rope motion back and forth. Oh, it's going too flat. You're going too flat. You're going too flat. Okay, you need to practice uh, the rope swing. Your rope swing and your club swing are very different right oh, now. Okay. The rope swing is a lot flatter. Okay. Is that but good or bad? Bad. Oh, bad. You have to uh, come up with a similar motion. You, your club goes this way, but your rope swing is more going this way here. Let me show you the rope swing. Yeah. <clears throat> So it's as simple as swing, 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 swing. You can actually hit the ball with the rope. I can touch the tough, right? Okay. So with that, you'll be able to have come up with something similar. But make sure you are moving the rope consistently back and forth. And you have to adjust your body motion to come up with the good rope motion because rope motion is the main thing here. So always when you work with the device, you have to really pay attention to the physical characteristics of the device, and you have to work with the, the device instead of forcing the device the way you want, but rather you have to secure good consistent motion of the device by adjusting your body motion. Okay. Yeah. So what is, um this is helping with the swing plane, or is it just swing plane, and also it will give you a better sequence, and particularly at the feel of uh, drawing a sword. Okay. With rope, you cannot really force it; you have to just uh, pull it down, right? Bring it down with this, let it go. So up until this point, you have to move the rope with the body turn here, and then add the arm motion here. <laughs> Naturally, you will have uh, the the motion you want. Okay. With the rope, yeah. When I sometimes when when I have trouble in uh, driving, I pull out my rope and then swing a few times and then hit the ball. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and they use the kettlebell, um, ten pounder kettlebell. You can swing the kettlebell, but the bottom line is, instead of forcing the club motion, try to feel the motion of the club, particularly feel the motion of the club head because that's what you want to generate and hit the ball, right? So uh, have good sequence instead of uh, try to use your muscles a lot. You have to really work with the club, but uh, you uh, changed your pattern quite a bit today.